Okay. Good morning, everybody. How are you? I am delighted to be here. I have uh, an exciting story to tell you. Uh, it, uh, it's a story that has connected research that we've been working on for many, many years, I could say decades, with actually bringing something exciting straight to the consumer. And so, are you going to advance the slides? Okay, cool. Let's get going. And I'd also like to recognize my uh, associate, Dr. Alicia Kishonis, that's at the Wee Quality Lab with me. So, Durham wheat. Who knows what Durham wheat is? Do we grow Durham wheat in Washington or Idaho? We grow a little bit in Idaho, but I don't believe any in, in, uh, in Washington state. Most of the Durham production is actually up in the Dakotas, Montana, and a lot up into Canada. It's a crop that can tolerate heat and drought. Can you move the microphone closer? Certainly. I want to make sure everybody can hear this. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. One of the reasons that Durham wheat can tolerate uh, heat and drought so well, and, and probably those things are going to become more and more prevalent in the future, probably. Well, Durham wheat evolved in what's known as the Fertile Crescent about a half a million years ago. Um, and it, it's the result of a hybridization of actually two wild grasses. Um, probably the most salient feature of Durham wheat from a processing and food standpoint, the kernels are very, very hard. Now, why is that? Wheat is not naturally hard. And in fact, those two wild grasses that form Durham wheat both have soft kernels, soft grains. Well, long story short is it was an accident of nature that when Durham wheat formed, those genes that make soft seeds, soft kernels, those genes were lost. Okay. The entire global industry that utilizes Durham wheat has had to deal with this fact that the kernels are very, very hard. And here you just see kind of like a representation of a modern uh, Durham mill. You probably can't see down there at the bottom, but Durham wheat milling says it is focused on, I can't even see it, semolina producing semolina. Who knows what semolina is? Excellent. This is a highly educated crowd, I can see that. Semolina is just simply a very coarse granular product that we derive from milling Durham grain, as you know. Instead of flour, we call it semolina. If you've also heard of farina, farina is a similar coarse material. That comes from bread wheat instead of Durham wheat. Okay. Why do we make semolina? Well, essentially because we have to. The kernel is so hard that if we try to reduce the particle size and make an actual flour, we have damaged that material so much, broken so many starch granules, that we actually render it almost unusable. OK. I don't expect you to know, actually know what this is. These are chromosomes of, of Durham wheat. And what we see here is those arrows are supposed to be pointing, and they are pointing to little tiny yellow dots. And I don't know if you can see them where you're sitting from. But Durham wheat, trust me, has 28 chromosomes. And those little yellow dots are a little tiny snippet of chromosome from bread wheat, soft wheat, that we have moved over into Durham wheat. Okay. Those genes, that little snippet of chromosome from bread wheat, carries those softness genes. They function in Durham wheat, and voila, we have now made the hardest of all wheats just like soft white that we grow here in the Palouse. And so these are just electron micrographs illustrating the inside of the wheat kernel. On the top is regular, or is, I'm sorry, on the top is, is soft Durham, and on the bottom is this very hard Durham. And you can almost imagine, it's almost like t either having a very tough hard concrete, or almost having something that's maybe a little bit more like pumice or something that actually can break and is quite friable. Okay. So that's the technology. And that took more than 20 or 30 years to actually get out of the laboratory. Here I'd like to introduce to you, and I don't know if 
Doug was going to try to make it up. Doug, are you in the audience? <laughs> anyway, this is uh, two brothers, Doug and Art McIntosh. They own and run Harvest Ridge Organics down outside of Lewiston. Okay. And so what we had developed, sorry, back up two or three. Thank you. We're going in the wrong direction. Sorry. <laughs> Anyway, Doug and Art McIntosh, uh, once we had the soft durum uh, sort of ready for prime time, we were sort of looking around the, the local area for somebody that we might be able to partner with. And one of the key things about wheat is rarely do we eat it directly. It is almost always ground into a flour or semolina or some sort of a powder-like substance. Well. A big commercial flour mill that would not fit by any means in this building requires rail cars full of, uh, of wheat. And we didn't have that. We needed to start on a local level where we could work with hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of pounds, not tons. And luckily, OK, next, yeah. This, this is good right here. And so what the Macintoshes had invested in, in addition to the, their organic wheat program, was a commercial stone mill. And I think we've all heard of Bob's Red Mill. Um, he's got, I don't, last time I was over at Bob's, he had four or five or six big stone mills. And they're not humongous. They might be 10 feet across in diameter. So anyway, that's, that's the mill there. Uh, he's got a, they have a, a, a cylindrical sifter on the upper right hand corner that removes a little bit of the bran. So typically what we're making is not 100% whole wheat. You can make 100% whole wheat, but if you can take out just a little bit of the bran, you'll greatly improve the quality, the baking functionality quality of the flour. And that's what they do. And then just simply, I took a picture over the Moscow Food Co-op of the uh, flour bin <laughs> for that flour. So next slide, thanks. So um, it, was, it was a really great collaboration with the Macintoshes. Uh, they were very much entrepreneurs. They were very much uh, wanting to, you know, as we say, color outside the lines. And so they were very enthusiastic about trying to grow our soft durum, run it through their stone mill, produce soft durum flour. Well, that's great. Flour is good, we can take it home, we can make all kinds of things with it, but certainly we wanted to have a larger impact. And so one of the other uh, dots that we connected with was a great guy, Jim Harbor, uh, over in Pullman, uh, owns Porchlight Pizza, and Alicia and some of the uh, students at the School of Hospitality Business Management uh, worked with Jim and his crew and developed basically a 100% soft Durham pizza crust. And you can go there today, you can go there tomorrow. If you want to eat soft Durham pizza crust, that's where it is. And so this just picture, there's Alicia and, and Jessica up there in the corner. And if you've been to Porchlight, you know that that's the inside of the restaurant. So, okay. And just to sort of extend what we've done so far in terms of bringing this research basically to the consumer. Uh, they're also using it at the uh, Moscow Food Co-op. I just took a couple pictures uh, recently. It's in the pizza dough. It's in the old school chocolate chip cookies. Obviously, they're selling the flour. You can take it home and, and give it a test drive. Um, but also a very exciting for us, certainly, uh, local food kind of development, evolution. Okay. So that's just kind of like from, from cradle to, gosh, I don't want to say grave. That sounds terrible. <laughs> from start to finish. <laughs> from research to consumer. Um, so it's been, I, uh, speaking for Alicia, you know, it's been so exciting as a researcher to actually see years and years and years of work come to fruition and, and actually benefit, you know, the common person that that's, needs to eat every day and have good, local, nutritious, sustainable food. So that's our story. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Alicia. Um, I'll just, by introduction, what we have here, we have two different kinds of pasta presses in my lab. This one, it would be kind of like a, a semi-commercial. You might see it at a, at a restaurant. It's, it's nothing you would probably have at home because it's several thousand dollars, unless you're really into making your own pasta. Um, but anyway, I'll, Alicia's got a demo, and I'll just let you describe what you're going to do. Thank you so much.
So uh, you've now heard about how Soft Durham came to be. And one thing we get asked a lot is, you know, it makes great pizza, it makes great cookies, all these things. Uh, but sometimes skeptics are, does it still make pasta? Because traditionally, people think that pasta could only be made from semolina. Uh, and we've done quite a bit of research uh, to sort of show or prove that soft durum uh, makes great pasta equal to or better than uh, semolina pasta. So uh, we've used our extruder for that quite a bit. And some people struggle with uh, whole wheat pasta, uh, either the texture or maybe the flavor. Um, the stone ground, however, uh, that 10% sifted off the top makes a very nice pasta, uh, really nice flavor and pretty good texture. And you guys will find that out at lunch today. Um, so I'll give a very brief uh, show of this uh, pasta extruder now. And uh, I'll be up here with it at the break as well um, if people want to take a closer look. Um, basically, we put a, a pasta dough uh, in here. Uh, we put flour and uh, maybe 30%, no, 35, 36% water, uh, mixes it up, and then it will go through uh, a barrel that has a large screw. It uh, is pressurized, and the pasta will come out at the end, and we can make fun shapes. Uh, we've got shells today, so um, most people can't see it, uh, but it will make all sorts of fun shapes. So uh, I think it's shells for lunch as well. And um, yeah, we can control the speed of this cutter to kind of help facilitate different shapes of noodles. Um, and it's been, it's been a very successful venture in proving that Soft Durham can not only do all of these other new products, but can also um, still make great pasta. So that is this. Come see me later if you want to take a closer look at the pasta extrusion. <laughs>